session is authorized by the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code Section 551.001 concerning any and all purposes permitted by the act. Should any final action, final decision, final vote be required, that final action, final decision, and final vote shall take place in open session. And we are now in executive session as of 6-19. Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Santa Fe ISD Board of Trustee meeting. It's important this meeting be conducted in an organized and efficient manner, and that we'd like to outline some ground rules for all of us to follow. So recognize this is a board meeting. By law, most of the discussion, all of the voting, must be done in open session. Public participation by necessity must be limited to that part of the agenda that is reserved for public input. Occasionally, the board may seek comment or a clarification from an administrator or someone from in attendance uh, or someone from the audience. It's the board's prerogative to seek that information from non-board members as it chooses. However, unsolicited participation from the audience is inappropriate. At times, it may seem like we're voting on issues of importance with little or no discussion. Just be advised, all board members get a packet of background information about the various subject on tonight's agenda several days in advance of actually coming here to participate in the meeting. After we receive our packets, the board members have and often exercise the opportunity to contact various school administrators to ask specific questions in an effort to better understand the issues on which we're expected to vote. Thank you for being interested in your school district as witnessed by your presence here tonight. We encourage your active participation in the school district we encourage your active participation in the education of your children. We appreciate your cooperation in helping us conduct the business of Santa Fe ISD in an organized and civilized manner, and hope you enjoy the evening. Okay, Mr. Davenport, would you lead us in an invocation, please? Yes, sir. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've done for each and every one of us in this room and our community. And dear Lord, we just ask that as we approach the uh, start of the new school year that you uh, help us, you know, get ready in a, in a, in a way that is going to be satisfactory to all of us that uh, our kids and our staff get the best of the best. Dear Lord, help us make those decisions um, that can lead the future of Santa Fe ISD in the right path. Dear Lord, and ask that you watch over each and every one of us as we drive home tonight. For it is your name we pray. Amen. 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 Stand for the pledges, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, one organism, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. Combining the two pledges. <laughs> Okay, do we have any action from our closed session tonight? Um, no, sir, but we do have some hiring that we gave Dr. Wall. We're just going to read the names out. In accordance with D.C. Local, the superintendent has hired the following contractual personnel, Jonathan Burns, Melanie Daniel, Sean DeFlora, Catherine Dudley Scott, Peyton Goodwin, Terry Helpenstiel, Carrie Holsey, Francis Minsman as teacher for 187 days. Charla Judis as speech pathologist assistant for 187 days. Kristen Lawrence as assistant principal for 212 days. And Christy Peterson as director of student services for 226 days for the 2019-2020 school year. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Okay, Ms. Hanser, ready for some recognitions? Yes, sir. Tonight. But before I begin with the recognitions, and actually I'm going to defer that to Ms. Davenport, but um, I would like to introduce Kristen Lawrence, who is in the audience, as she's our new assistant principal at the junior high. And um, many of you may recognize her because she's also a former alumni. So congratulations. Congratulations. Well, good job, team. Yep. 
Okay, with that, we will now move into our information items. Uh, Dr. Wall, you have some reports and stuff. Yes, sir. Us. We'll we'll begin your monthly reports and review with Mr. Atkins, who will give us some updates on our new school construction as well as preparing for back to school. How's everybody doing this evening? Good. Good. All right. Uh, some quick updates on projects. Uh, the uh, new elementary school is progressing. Um, we moved, uh, started moving teacher stuff in. Uh, today, so they started uh, getting all their belongings that they got out of the other buildings and taken over there today. We finished up most of the first four classrooms, a couple of the second four classrooms. We'll finish that up probably Wednesday this week. The contractor is uh, scrambling to get everything wrapped up and done. The flooring's about 98% complete. Uh, their furniture is probably 98% installed. All the new furniture's there. Uh, they're installing shelving today. The um, uh, we're doing some final touches in a lot of areas on access control and, and on um, different systems like that. So uh, we, we still got several weeks worth of work to do, and then we'll be doing punch lists and stuff once, uh, once school starts. Uh, we did start walking on punch lists on Saturday, so we have started that process. Uh, but uh, it'll, it will, you know, we'll wrap it up after school starts, and we'll work around schedules and everything, weekends and evenings and stuff like that. The gym floor is painted. Uh, they should be urethane in it into this week, um, so it'll be ready for school starts. Um, the uh, G-and-a-half drives, they poured concrete today uh, on the west side. They did widen it four feet on the northern part, so we're working through that with a contractor. And uh, <clears throat> we should, hopefully, by sometime into this week or next week, have a tech stop permit for the signal so we can get that on order and coming. Uh, the tech stop permit for the uh, signal was delayed because they failed to let us know we needed to submit another form back in April. Uh, they informed us of this last week. We've got it to them already. It's in review in Austin. So um, just seems like with those guys, they always forget to tell us something that they're missing. So. Is, is yeah. that, that's a breakdown between their local person and Austin, it seems like, more than once. Yeah, so so it, it's – we've been talking to the Signal folks. We talked to them, and we said, hey, you know, where are we at with the permit? And they said, they said, well, we sent comments back in April to permitting. Well, permitting never sent them to us or anybody on the team. Um, so it's a permitting group that, that seems to have the big disconnect. So we, we got them all their stuff, and they said, hey, your permit's ready. I sent an email two weeks ago, three weeks ago, saying, hey, I heard the permit's going to be ready. When can we pick it up? Nothing. A week later, I sent another one. I get a response, well, you haven't filled out this form from Elma. And I'm like, well, what form? Back in the reference of an email back in April, or um, saying they sent it back in April. Nobody ever got it. Um, nobody has any record of it. So... We reached out to that guy, got the form filled out, completed, and resubmitted. And it's almost identical one we did in December. So I don't know what the difference was, why they couldn't use the same one. But it's done, submitted. We should have that. Um, there, there was a price increase on the light, but I think we have it in the budget to get it done. So we just need to decide whether we want to do it through Division One or try to go contract ourselves. But we're looking at at least six months, five months before it's operational based on our time frame right now. Just the lead time on the mast for the uh, light is what the problem is. For so that's rest, where we are. For the rest of the members, um, is there any way to expedite that uh, from a cost perspective? Not, not that I found. Uh, we're, we're, we're asking us questions. We're going we're gonna to call around and see what we can do. So, but yeah, if, if we can, we will. So TxDOT originally said if they had one on, their, on one of their uh, yards, they would give it to us and we could replace it, but they didn't have any of that size. It's... Um, I think there's a 50, a 60 footer, a 55 footer, and a 30 and a 25. So it just, you know, they're, they're, the ones on 1764 are very massive. Right. So that's that's kind of the challenge. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, the the road, I don't know the full schedule on G and a half, but they did pour the, pour the west side and they plan on, I guess, still being done by the time school starts. Hopefully, so that could be another challenge we have to meet. But that's a city contractor now, so. Uh, but, you know, as far as the site goes, the landscaper was working real hard to get irrigation in. He was, was laying pipe today. He worked uh, last week. Uh, they, they had to hire a new landscaper. The original one walked off the job, so that's why we're a little delayed there. But I don't see a reason why he can't have 
grass down and things like that before school starts. And the playground equipment's due to come, well, it's due to come today, but I, I didn't see them when I was there earlier. So we'll see if they showed up. Any questions for Bob? Chief Braun, is there any kind of uh, struggles you're going to have with your department controlling traffic? Or are you going to partner with the city? Or is there? Well, they have to stand alone on that. So we'll make it happen. Okay. A couple other project updates real quick. Parking lots were pouring at uh, 1 a.m. to this morning, 2 a.m. These two parking lots here in junior high will have two small pours left, and it'll be wrapped up in a couple weeks. Um, most of the junior high is already poured, and the north parking lot is taken care of and pretty much done. We've got a small patch we're doing at RJ at the same time. That may come out of the pour tomorrow. Um, RJ Willem carpet was delayed. It'll be here on Wednesday. Uh, then the front office will be pretty much wrapped up and done. The bathrooms are pretty close to being wrapped up and done. Everything should be done in the week, first of next week over at R.J. Woolen. So that looks good. Sewer line project at the uh, junior high is complete. We need to run a jet through there real quick, and we are trying to get that scheduled for sometime early this week, and we'll be done there. So um, summer cleans, we're going to get out of high school tomorrow, junior high. We've already cleaned all the furniture. We just got to top scrub and wax the floor. So week, week and a half there, and we're pretty much on schedule. So uh, we'll start sending the custodians out to the regular campuses sometime next week and uh, get those ready for start of school. Uh, our yard crew is we've added a person, and we haven't had to spend any time at, at Barnett now, so we're able to, we should have all the campuses in good order by the time start of school comes. Any other questions? questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. We also have Coach Bentley this evening who would like to give you an update on our athletic program starting our 2019-20 school year. All right. How's everybody doing? Good. 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 Coach. Good. The, uh, the newsletter was in your board packet as well with a couple other updates on next school year. I just want to highlight a couple points that uh, have gone over have gone on over the summer um, strength and conditioning camp we had 220 athletes that actually signed up for our strength and conditioning camp we ended up having to move our junior high session that was here at the junior high to the high school uh, due to a couple of personnel issues uh, but we ended up moving it everything went on without a without a hitch and it was uh it was good good for the kids uh, and, and all of them worked hard it was five weeks of good work uh, so very proud of that. Volleyball camp, they, they did their camp over the summer. 115 kids participated, and she opened our camp this year. It was the first year uh, from kindergarten all the way up to ninth grade. Uh, so that was a good turnout for her. I think she's going to continue opening it up to kindergartners. She's just going to have to list in some more of her uh, high school kids' help. Uh, that was a little uh, – the age group for kindergarten and volleyball is a little tough, but – She's going to get some of the some more of the high school kids to help her, which she had most of her team out there. Part of their community service project was was helping those kids out and kind of coaching them and kind of grooming them into whatever she's uh, teaching them to do. Well, the, the gauntlet got thrown today with that article that was in the paper for volleyball. Oh, I'm there. sure. <laughs> it's, um, it's it's good. It's good. I like that good. attitude. Oh, appreciate it. Uh, football program, uh, we held our, I guess, first ever since since I've been here, Camp Head Start. Uh, we did it last Wednesday through Friday. We had tw uh, 82 participants. That's incoming 7th grade, 8th grade, and ninth grade. A really big turnout. We only had 33 that originally pre-registered for it, and then we ended up with 82 of them that ended up coming out. Uh, it was really good for us. All of the coaches were there from junior high to high school. Uh, our trainers were there, so it was a really good turnout, and we put in our offensive terminology. We basically did a five-day install with them in three days uh, just because we had so many coaches there and so many bodies. So the kids actually got a bunch of one-on-one -on -one instruction uh, that they're going to have a head start. That's why we call it that, come first day of junior high. And then uh, for the incoming freshmen, we'll be on Monday, uh, this, uh, this upcoming Monday. Uh, so in your in the packet, we also did an FYI. I hope you guys have it. It should be in there. Uh, we're doing a new parent student handbook for Santa Fe ISD. Uh, it should be in there. There you go. Uh, and then we also have a uh, a brand new coach's handbook. And it's it's kind of lengthened. Uh, so what I did was I took a bunch of the surrounding school districts and just combined it into one to fit uh, to fit Santa Fe. So that's just uh, for your information and knowledge. Whenever you just want to go through it and look at it. Um, 
volleyball is currently in their, their camp before they start. They actually start on August 1st. Uh, cross country starts their first practice on August 5th. Uh, we did a meet the coach night for um, girls soccer, new head coach for girls soccer. Uh, softball, we did a meet the coach night. We have a brand new boys basketball coach. That, that meet the coach night is coming up August 7th. Uh, and that's really for the booster club members and the current athletes and parents that I want to get in and ask questions and you know everybody has questions for the new coaches so uh, that was their chance to get in and and see the kids basically before the first day of school when they show up to their athletic period so we did that for those three and uh, those went off really well August 7th will be the uh, meet the teacher night for the boys basketball 6 p.m. I think I, I, I could be wrong but 6 p.m. Uh, the athletic department is also looking into text dot on doing a adopt a highway. Uh, we're currently trying to call and see what we can do to adopt a portion of the highway, especially right in front of the school would be really cool. And my idea is to basically have a, a one athletic program, whether it be football, volleyball, when they're not in season, to be in charge of making sure that's clean. Uh, on top of all the other stuff that uh, each program is going to have to do, at least one community service project, but this will be in addition to that. Um, baseball, just I mean, because it's it's been a while. But uh, Rome Schubert was Player of the Year. He was the All County Baseball Player of the Year. He was also Second Team All Greater Houston Area um, Second Team Pitcher. So something that hadn't been in a while. But thought I'd bring it back up. Uh, seven on seven football. We entered into a league with Texas City Hitchcock and Lamarck. Uh, we went actually went one and one on each one of the days. We did two of them. Uh, we lost to Hitchcock on both of those days. We beat Texas City on the first day and then uh, beat Lamarck on the, on the second day that we did it. Uh, we also competed in a state qualifier tournament up in Conroe. We got into one pretty soon. We're on a waiting list. Uh, we won one game against Manville, uh, lost two games, one against Heights and one against Magnolia High School. We also had our two kids that did uh, participate in the Bayou Bowl football, Nathan Kruger, Austin Lamb. Those are our two kids that are going off to college. Uh, they actually... It was pretty cool because it was toward the end of the game. I think there was 33 seconds left, but Kruger, was, you know, quarterback connected with Lamb, wide receiver for a touchdown. It was only, it was 13 yards, but it was good for them to play with a bunch of other all-star kids for them to connect up and make a, you know, make that quarterback receiver connection. Uh, and that's it. Uh, any other questions? We're excited about this year. There's a lot of stuff going on, a little turnover with coaches, some at the last moment, some that were early. Uh, but we're excited about it. Any questions? I do. I, I was really pleased to see the athletic department working on the player uh, parent handbook. How do you envision using that tool with your, your parents and your players? So but before any, any one of our programs start, they have a uh, meet the – well, not meet, but they have a parent night that they're doing before – well, some of them will be before season, some of them will be right when it starts, you know, like the fir very first week. And at the very end of that, there's the parent has to sign it and the student has to sign it. And basically, it just outlines all of our policies that the athletic department has in one. And at the very end of it is attached to the UIL parent handbook because the UIL actually has one. And ours mirrors theirs, but theirs has a ton of information. Uh, and so basically, we want to give them that information at meet the parent night or you know before your program starts. But they're going to have to sign that saying they read that. Uh, but it just outlines basically anything from protocol as far as wanting a parent meeting with a coach and uh, playing time and all that stuff is already outlined in the UIL. We're just reinforcing it in ours, and then we ask for their signature. Cool. Good. What about the uh, the coach's side of it? The, the coach's handbook is, is on us. That's that's for the district, and the that's not for the – that won't be out there for public view for uh, anybody. I mean, it'll be out there, but – it's basically for us to monitor our coaches, make sure all of our policies, make sure everybody's aware of what they need to do, uh, what type of uh, lightning plan do we have, which we have a new one this year. Uh, so basically everything we have is in that book. It's our point of reference for all the coaches to go back and look and say, hey, is, what am I supposed to be doing, you know, X, Y, Z, and then they go back and look at it. I mean, we, we had it in the past, just wasn't very lengthy, but I lengthened it and made sure everything was in there. Appreciate you, Coach. So you, you got time to fill your gaps that you see? What's that? For the coaches you lost, have you already filled those positions? Everything is full currently right now. Okay. Unless somebody surprises you. Somebody surprises us today <laughs> or tomorrow. Good. No. <laughs> so, something I don't know about. Yeah. Keep but up yeah, the good work. We're, we're currently full, yes, sir. Keep up the good work because it's very nice to see not only what you're requiring them to do 
on the field but off the field mm -hmm. with the interviews, the goal setting that you're doing, the community service. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, one more thing. I, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Harris and Mr. Cop with all the hires that we've had to do. It's been a, it's been, and, and I'm in every interview that we have and they're in every one and it's, it, you know, it's tough to match up and do it, but it's a lot of work, but thanks to them, we make our schedules work that way we can be in there at the same time. So we've done a pretty good job and we've hired some, some pretty good coaches, I think. So appreciate y'all. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Right, thank you. Thanks, coach. That's it. All right. Uh, Ms. Bowers, you have the uh, some Health Advisory Council report for us. Hi, I'm presenting this evening as a member of the School Health Advisory Council. Um, we're required to meet four times a year, and um, our chairperson is Jody Nash, and um, she also wrote our. We're also required to present to you our activities, our summary of activities for the year. So included in your board packet is our 2018-19 summary of activities. And um, I can answer any questions you might have about it. We're not making any recommendations th this year to change anything in our school health policy. So we're just asking that you approve our activities. That's not an action item. Mm -hmm. okay. You're just advising you just us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> scared me for a minute. I thought, wait You're a like, minute, voting? did I jump Where's the wrong the side button? of the page here? <laughs> I think everybody's scrolling the yeah. agenda. Yeah. Pretty, everybody up here scrolling the agenda that. pretty fast, going, whoa, wait a minute. We to review the annual report. <laughs> yep. So does anybody okay. have any questions? <laughs> yes, does anybody have questions? Forcery on that? Everything else is usually a vote, so. <laughs> no, you, you get to Sorry. tell us on this one. Okay. Good. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, Dr. Schumann, you have the optional flexible school day program. Good evening. Following the completion of the school year, TEA requires us to hold a public hearing to review school progress of the optional flexible school day program. In addition, at a public hearing, the district is required to present an overview uh, explaining what the optional flexible school day program entails. The public hearing allows the district to receive input and feedback regarding this program. The recommended allowed uh, time for public input is five minutes per person. The board will listen to any public comments regarding student progress and the continuation of the optional flexible school day program, which is the basis of student enrollment at the Indian Success Academy. So now we will enter into a public meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the school district's application for the continuation of the optional flexible school day program for the 2019-2020 school year and also to review um, this past year's progress. So what is optional flexible school day program? Uh, it allows our district to provide uh, flexible hours um, and days of attendance for students who meet at least one of the requirements of Texas Education Code 29.0822A. At Indian Success Academy, we focus on students um, who are at risk of dropping out of school, um, have actually dropped out of school, or as a result of attendance requirements under section TEC 25.092 will be denied credit for one, one or more classes in which the students uh, have been enrolled. For attendance, um, it's not taken the same way as it is uh, on our other campuses. It's based on minutes a student actually attends. For them to accrue minutes, they have to be in attendance for at least 45 minutes. And students earn one eligible day of attendance for each four hours they attend. Attendance is maintained and verified by the teacher of record. For state funding, it's based on the number of days a student attends. It is not based on the number of days a student attends. Again, it's based on minutes. 
and funding is available for students um, even at ages 21 through 25 at the same rate. And now I just want to share with you our annual report for the past school year for 2018-19 and um, for Indian Success Academy. Um, I have a three-year uh, view for you for enrollment and credits earned. Um, enrollment for 16-17 was 65, 17-18 went up to 70, and then during 18-19 there were 46 students and 24 of these students will continue in August. Uh, there was um, an increased number in 1718 as we recovered quite a few students uh, during that year. If you look at the number of semester credits earned by students, uh, we had some younger students on campus this year. For 1617, we had uh, 527 uh, cred semester credits earned, uh, 18. 17, 18, we had 86, and for the 18, um, 586, and for the 18, 19 school year, we had 703 uh, semester credits earned, which is the highest number within that group. Again, I have for you here graduates. For 16, 17, we were at 24, uh, 17, 18, 42 and that was that bubble of students. Uh, this year we graduated 26 students. And then we've had students enrolled in the College of the Mainland certification programs. Um, we've gone from five to 10, um, back to five, and at the end of the school year we had two still enrolled. So looking forward to the 2019-2020 school year, uh, ISA goals um, are as follows. Attain a high school diploma. Every kid that goes over there, we want to retain them, and we want to ensure that each one of them accomplishes um, the completion of their diploma requirements. We want to increase the number of students enrolled in dual credit courses at College of the Mainland. Um, in certifications as well as academic track. We want to ensure each ISA graduate attains an industry-based certification listed on the commissioner's approved list to ensure students are marketable and employable upon graduation. We want to improve the social emotional support to meet the needs of each individual student. And collaboratively, uh, we want to develop a team professional learning goals and a strategic plan to attain those. So uh, questions either from the board or from the audience. Does anyone have any questions on the um, flexible school day program? So in 2018-2019. Um, yeah, you're seeing the same thing I am, the credits. Yeah, so it's so high versus the number enrolled. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to do the math. 703 credits were earned in the 2018-2019 um, school year. Mm -hmm. 46 students. Mm -hmm. That's 15 credits per student. Mm -hmm. Is there a dual credit or anything else in, uh, built in there? Um. Dual credit would not have been included. These are ones that uh, student act students actually earned while they were within the program. Yeah, that's a tremendous amount of credits in last year over compared to the number of students. Mm -hmm. If you look at the trend over time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you compare it to the prior year, we had students attending uh, fewer, uh, a lesser amount of time. Um, they were seniors who were completing, and then um, once they complete, they no longer attend. Students that well, last were, year we basically had less students that were there more time mm -hmm. compared to previous year. Less number had, there more hours. Yeah, yeah. when we had previous year we had more students that were there a minimal amount of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. At this time, we'll close our public hearing. Thank you, Dr. Schumer. Thank you. Okay. We're ready now to move into our consent agenda.
Yes, sir. We have a few items for your consideration and approval this evening as a consent agenda. Those would be our prior minutes and accounts payable, as well as this year's Santa Fe ISD teacher appraisal system appraisers that we approve each year, as well as an adjunct faculty agreement for um, 4-H as an extracurricular activity. JJ MOU for the coming year, Transforming Lives, which is a part of JJ for the coming year. Our CAP program, another alternative program for the coming year, as well as student transfers by policy. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve as presented. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Any questions or comments? If not, would you cast your votes on that, please? And it has passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into our regular agenda. First thing we have a contract with Harris County Department of Education. Um, Ms. Oliver, I believe you have that for us. Good afternoon. Um, ABS West provides a highly structured environment with specially trained staff to meet the unique needs of students with significant behavioral concerns. Currently, Santa Fe has multiple positions to assist students requiring this level of support to receive their free an appropriate education as recommended by their admission, review, and dismissal, dismissal committees. This request is presented to the board for approval per policy, board policy CH local as the amount exceeds the $25,000 mark. I'm asking you to approve the amount of $71,559 for the positions that we have at ABS West. Is this? Questions. The, the this dollar amount that's it's listed awesome. is not the same as what you just mentioned. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that I was looking at. The contract, the contract shows three. If you read three the actual seats. contract, three seats. Yeah. Three but seats to the amount of seventy-one thousand five hundred and fifty-nine for the total. Our board packet has Our board not packet to has four, four seats. Thousand. We have ninety-four thousand for four. Okay, we only have three seats. Somehow we must have given you the old. We did have four. We have reduced okay. to three seats this year. Normally, in the past, we've had four, but we reduced to three. And so when we handed the in the three is what the contract says, but our board package is asking for four okay. at 94000 okay. So, three. so the, the proposal the is for three at 71559 Yeah, it would be three at I'm going to write that number down. Can you write that down, Eric? Say yes, sir. 71,000. Say it out loud. 71,559. Okay. And it's broken down between the Idea B grant and local funds. You want me to do that? Yeah. Right. Just, yeah, make it for the. Okay. Change Mr. It. President, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we review and approve the one contract for three students with Harris County Department of Education not to exceed $71,559 for the 2019-2020 school year for the students attending the Adaptive Behavior School Campus, ABS West. Yes. That's a second. second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the contract with the uh, Harris County Development of Education. Any other questions or comments? If not, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Okay, Dr. Schumann, the um, optional flexible school day program that you just presented, we need to now approve that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Norman. A student is eligible to participate in an optional flexible school day authorized under TC 29.0822 if they meet one of the following conditions, the student's at risk of dropping out of school, uh, the student is attending school, um, a school implementing an approved innovative campus plan, uh, the student is attending school with an approved early college high school program distinct designation, the student as a result of attendance requirements under TEC 25.092 will be denied credit for one or more classes in which the student has been enrolled. 
and two, the student is less than 18 years of age and not emancipated by marriage or court order, and the student's parent or person standing in parental relation to the student agree in writing to the student's participation. The optional flexible school day program allows for ADA to be gained for district um, for the district for students participating in an alternative learning environment. And so uh, we're requesting that you approve the program uh, for the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. President, I make a motion to review and approve the submission of the application for the optional flexible school day program for 2019-2020 school staffed. year. Staffed. Ask that question for a second. Right How did, how's it staffed? Do y'all have teachers on staff that, mm -hmm. that are already, so no matter what the numbers are, they have got it covered? The numbers are adjusted based on population. So okay. it's really the high school staff. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we review and approve this submission application for this program. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, would you cast your votes, please? And it has passed unanimously. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Schumann, you have the Com Collegiate High School MOU for us. Yes. You have it pulled up? No, uh, our computer I just got it crashed. back up. We just updated a bunch of stuff. Okay. Uh, for Collegiate High School at College of the Mainland, is it's an improved middle college high school through the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. As such, students may enroll in more than two dual credit courses per semester and may enroll in dual credit coursework with freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior high school standing. College of the Mainland provides P through 16 curriculum alignment through intensive curriculum crosswalks that support both the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills and the THECB 60 by 30 strategic plan. Santa Fe ISD focuses on enrolling juniors and seniors in the collegiate high school program. However, for programs that may take longer than two years to complete, such as process technology and nursing, the district may make an exception for sophomore enrollment to allow students the ability to attain an associate degree or certification in these areas. Each year, Santa Fe ISD budgets to pay half of the fall and spring semester tuition for up to 20 Santa Fe high school students who choose, who choose to attend collegiate high school. Um, they go by application and um, by qualifying and meeting the requirements. And the high school uh, reviews those applications. Thank you. I guess, have we ever had more applicants than we had spots for? To my knowledge, we have not turned down a student who wanted to enroll. I, I don't ever remember one. I was just curious. We did not turn anybody down that met the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Okay. There have been kids that have been turned down that they did not meet Didn't meet the qualifications. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Mr. President, I make a motion to review and approve the partnership agreement with the College of the Mainland for Collegiate High School for the 2019-2021 school years. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this agreement with College of the Mainland. Any other questions or comments? Not cast your votes, please. And it has passed unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we've got the uh, student code of conduct for 2019-2020. It's Ryan. Okay, good evening. The 2019-2020 Santa Fe ISD student code of conduct is based on the TASB student code of conduct model. The highlighted changes within the body of the handbook are based on the most recent legislative se session. At the end of the handbook, there are four levels of discipline. These were realigned to Chapter 37 of the Texas Education Code and the required PEMS coding. 
Offenses and consequences were rewritten to be more clear for students, parents, and administrators. The document is provided electronically to parents, students, faculty, and staff, and communicates expectations and guidelines to regulate student behavior. We're asking that you consider and approve the 2019-2020 Student Code of Conduct as presented. Is there, before we approve this, is there any way we can somehow do some form of like a compliance where parents and students have to acknowledge that they've got this at the beginning of school district? So and therefore, like our campus leadership has a little bit more of um, something to go off of should the, uh, an issue arise? They do do that upon registration. They are acknowledging the receipt of the code of conduct in the campus handbooks and they sign off on that. They can't register until they get past that. Any way to make them read it? <laughs> no. <laughs> we let them know where it's posted. Um, parents do utilize it. There are a lot of parents Part that of use it. Line. But Thoughts yeah, angle. we have them acknowledge receipt of. Does our own staff read it and acknowledge it? That's a good question. Um, I, I know administrators are very familiar with it. I think campus, campuses, I would, teachers. Do you sign off on would, it? Would that be any of value to you all? A lot of it is the law. Right. right. And I'd say 75% of it is, uh, it's about removals to alternative school or expulsions. And teachers don't really necessarily need to know about that. The administrators do. The other 15% is about the levels of discipline and appropriate consequences. I'm just looking for transparency throughout the entire district at all the campuses and things that if somebody acts up, you know, whether it be a student or even an administrator or a teacher or whatever the case, it's very easy to refer back to something you have acknowledgement and okay. you can start the documentation process. Um, because obviously as the board and as Dr. Wall and the rest of the administrators move forward and, and increase the level of expectations in the district, it's something else that we can have uh, to hold each other accountable, mm -hmm. including us up here. Mm -hmm. So. I like that idea. Any other questions? Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we consider and approve the 2019-2020 Student Code of Conduct as presented. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the Code of Conduct. Any other questions? Okay. I cast your votes, please. It's passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Okay, last item tonight on our regular agenda, Mr. Atkins, you've got a maintenance service agreement. Yes, sir. So back in uh, 2010 when we entered into an ESCO agreement with Hunt Services to replace uh, the, uh, or put in the 600-ton centrifugal chiller, the 120-ton heat recovery chiller, and uh, relocate the 350-ton chiller from the high school to the uh, Kubitschek and also put a new chiller in it. Um, the uh, junior high, we entered into a 15-year service agreement uh, for annual maintenance on all those chillers, quarterly maintenance on the heat recovery and the um, centrifugal. This is a continuation of that. We bring it to you because it exceeds $25,000. Uh, we also have the chiller for this building uh, and the chiller for uh, the maintenance building on that same agreement, um, so they are coming out quarterly, servicing those and annually. Um, so far, this has been a pretty good agreement. Uh, we we haven't had much failure on our stuff, and uh, you know when we do have failure, the the stuff that's under warranty, they stepped up and done timely. So, um, you know we're in, got probably six more years on some of these chillers in this agreement, and. Uh, eight more years on the two chillers for this building and uh, maintenance building, so. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I make, I make a motion to approve the continuation of the three chiller maintenance services with hunting services for 2019-2020 at an annual cost of not to exceed $34,200. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve this maintenance service agreement. Any other questions? Not cash your votes, please. Well, I'm not going to vote to cut off my own air conditioner. And it's passed <laughs> unanimously. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, that is all of our regular agenda items. So we will now move into our public forum.
board policy provides time at each regular board meeting for the public and employees to appear before the board to discuss matters concerning their interest. Time of 30 minutes has been allotted for those who wish to address the board. According to our policy, persons must sign up by the Thursday prior to the board meeting and will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes each. Delegations of more than three persons shall appoint one person to present their views before the board. Sets are also spending some time uh, behind the scenes from a lot of folks looking at trying to understand what the Texas legislature just did and understand many of the bills that affect us and school safety and security and finances. I'm sure there are a lot of cities and other tax entities out there that are trying to understand what the legislature just did uh, to them and, and the way things are going to be funded and all that. But we're, we're managing that and the budget is, is going through as it should uh, appropriately with all that. Uh, one exciting bit of news though, Santa Fe ISD has received, will receive that $10.9 million that the legislature set aside for us uh, for uh, recovery effort and moving forward and safety and security and all with uh, that funding. Uh, there's many things being discussed now at a federal level that will ultimately have impact on all schools, not just Santa Fe. Uh, so the focus has not gone away. It's not over. And um, as I've had the opportunity to tell several of our politicians that they did a good job this last session. They, they took on a lot, but they're not done. And there are a lot of things that still remain to be done when it comes to areas that we're certainly interested in. And we will continue that and we'll periodically be updating on, on what we need from you for when you talk to folks and are out there and writing letters and to whoever. So again, there's a lot going on in that arena as well. And having said that, hopefully all your staff and all can enjoy the, the last few days of summer as we move in, but it gets exciting as she just laid out there a new teacher show, then everybody should then the students show, so it's it's all all coming. So that I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All those in favor raise your hand. And we are adjourned. Thank you all.